Greetings in peace. I hope you and yours are doing well today, wherever you might be watching this from. Now the topic of today is the Druze, their teachings, and similarity to Freemasonry. I have been wanting to do this presentation for a while because I had interactions with the Druze in my life. I was always fascinated by their culture and um, exploring other spiritual paths and ways of life like Freemasonry. I found a lot of similarities between th uh, the two paths and I wanted to make a video about it since there was no other uh, video out there about the Druze and Freemasonry. So I hope you enjoy what I have to offer and I thank you for joining me. As a Muslim I was always fascinated by the Druze and uh, how they existed as a community because a part of uh, their lineage goes back to the uh, Ismaili Shias who come from Hassan Saba, the old man of the mountain, now being led by Aga Khan IV. Now the Druze, um, they're a very exclusive bunch. They do not allow uh, marriage outside of their faith, nor allow any conversions. And some of their religious practices are even kept hidden from those that are un uninitiated into the mysteries, even amongst their own. So they have a very um, esoteric and uh, hidden in a cult uh, background about them but from their uh, leadership and from their following and teachings they're very peaceful and uh, benevolent people because they always assimilate with each country that they live in so you have them in mainly in the Middle East but they're also in America in um, Canada I believe they have them too but the beauty about them is that they give reverence to all fates and they assimilate wherever their life takes them. Now, they're a monotheistic uh, group, but they also uh, go by the teachings of the uh, Greek philosophers like Plato, Aristotle, Pythagoras, Zeno, and they also give uh, a reverence to the uh, Old Testament of the Holy Bible and also to the Holy Quran. So the Druze is like basically that perfect balance between the uh, the East and the West, you could say, where they follow all of the Eastern religions, but they also have a, like a blend with the Western philosophers of Greek, of uh, origin, and they, they mix the two in terms of how their uh, teachings are established. And that's, that's what uh, you know, I, I believe sets them apart from like the other groups in the Middle East. Because they, they're walking that middle path from what I've been able to understand about them. And also they're known as the people of monotheism. And uh, their, their teachings and their beliefs, it coincides with all other religions that are out there too. But they just have their own mystery about them, which, you know, which fascinated me, inspired me to talk about them and teach people about who they are for those who didn't know. The Epistles of Wisdom are basically the uh, volumes of sacred law that are for the Druze faith, and they consist of 111 epistles, I believe. And the epistles, they're basically, they combine the elements of Ismailism, which is a branch of Shia Islam and who uh, Hassan Saba, the old man of the mountain, was a part of, Gnosticism from Christianity, Hinduism, Neoplatonism, Pythagoreanism and other philosophies and other uh, like ways of life from East and West which makes it, ma makes it like a hidden esoteric order of the Middle East that only a few are initiated into even amongst the Druze community that are some that know and some that don't because uh, it's the mystery of trans like migrating your soul from one part of the other is a task that only a few can handle. So the beauty that I saw about the epistles is that they have Islam, Christianity, Hinduism, Greek philosophers, and there's no other faith that does that but the Jewish faith. And I want to give them credit for it, especially with some elements of Islamic Neoplatonism as well, to bring that unity between the East and the West and to follow faith, which I guess... Uh, Pre uh, preaches to ascend above a higher level. Now, 
they also believe in reincarnation and they think that if you were born in a Druze woman or a Druze man then that's what you come back as like there's no outside of that until you end that cycle of birth and rebirth which is achie achieved through the uh, successive lifetimes and once you completed that cycle you unite with the cosmic mind which is uh, called the Al-Akal I believe uh, it's, it's in one of the epistles where this is described so the Druze community like play has played an important part in the history of the Levant because even now to this day in important cabinet positions in Israel and Lebanon they play a major role and they're in very powerful positions to simulate a lot of these policies and like originally their faith did come from Islam but they are not considered Muslims you know despite their appearance of their uh, priest or their origins they're basically a, um, how do you say it um, a blend between the East and the West those that are like following the the middle path in, in their life and that's how I was able to perceive them as like with some of the interactions I had in my local community where the Druze own restaurants and they're very humble and they're very hard-working people and that's the the Druze and um, some parts of the Middle East they are considered a, a part of the Muslim population and in Syria they also have um, a mountain uh, I think it's called the Jabal al Druze the mountain of the Druzes now their their social customs mm, I guess makes them stand out differently from your average Muslim or Christian and they have a very tight-knit community and they stick by each other and they integrate themselves fully with the laws and customs of whatever homeland that they're in whether it's their native or if it's somewhere that they immigrate to and that's um, one thing we have in common even in the Islamic faith now the epistles of the Druze it includes the Old Testament the New Testament Holy Quran and the the works of all the Greek philosophers that are out there and they believe that to become like the complete Druze in your faith you need to be able to understand all of this al -akal, the knowledge of the initiate so the epistles or their volume of sacred law is always referred as Kitab al-Hikmah, the Book of Wisdom. Or they call it, uh, I, I believe, Hikmah al-Sharifa. So they believe that the, the esoteric nature of these books, once you incorporate all of these elements, it helps you become a better Druze in your understanding until you finally unite with that cosmic mind after whatever lifetimes that you're meant to be here for. The similarities I saw between the Druze and Freemasonry is that they both tell you to incorporate knowledges of all of the religions that are out there such as how even Manly Palmer Hall said one time that the true Mason is not creed bound he learns and incorporates and practices from each faith and each way of life and teaching that is out there. And the similarity that they share in their belief is that they give reverence to the Old Testament, the New Testament, the Holy Quran, the philosophical works of all the Greek philosopher, the Neoplatonism. And they incorporate all of that in, in their understanding because for them, they have to become one with that cosmic mind and uh, to achieve that akal in um, Arabic which means uh, you know the knowledge and even their traditions and esoterics they it's only revealed to them once they are initiated into the inner inner circles of the Druze order so those that are outside of it they can still be Druze but the knowledge or the path that you have to walk is not revealed unless you're one of the initiates and that's a big similarity that I've seen between them and Freemasonry is that they incorporate the knowledge of the East and the West they give reverence to all and then there's a special path for the uninitiated and the um, initiated and uh, that's the similarity that I've seen that they had now they also have I, I, I think the um, uninitiated Druze 
they call them the al jahal or jahiliya which is the ignorant or I, they also call them jismaniya which is like they're materialistic so even amongst their own they have an initiated sect and an uninitiated sect so in freemasonry that would be the profane world and then the initiated ones who are there to uplift the fallen state of mankind and and you make the better world by making the people better in it so in the Druze point of view they become better by increasing their uckal and incorporating the knowledges of all the eastern religions including hinduism gnosticism uh, islam christianity greek philosophy so they give reverence to all of that which makes them become better uh, Druze. so the study of the epistles is better guided when you have like a mentor so if you have a higher ranking Druze like knowledgeable ones that are guiding you then the initiated Druze is able to get a better understanding of this of, of its work so it's not misunderstood or misinterpreted just like putting something in the hands of the profane they just wouldn't get it so it, it's a similar concept to masonry where you have an initiate and then there's a mentor who guides him through the process it's the same in uh, the Druze faith where you have an elder Druze, the Druze Ukal, the knowledgeable ones. And then they take the time to make sure that the initiate is um, given the, the respect and the knowledge to be able to learn those lessons. To become better for their communities, for their self. And their ultimate goal which is to leave a better world behind, help humanity and become one with the cosmic mind. And you know all the similarities that tie to other religious and ph philosophical ph paths that are out there. This is Abu Ali Mansur, one of the uh, Islamic caliphs, also known as Al Hakim bi Amar Allah, the ruler by the order of God. He was the sixth Fatimid caliph and the sixteenth Ismaili imam, which now the current imam is. Um, his uh, Royal Highness Aga Khan IV and Hassan Saba the old man of the mountain is also a part of this group so Al-Hakim is he's a very uh, revered figure in Shia is Ismaili Islam and also the Nazaris which is the Ismaili community they give reverence to him where some even within the Druze pro proclaim him as God incarnate because of, I guess, um, and some people might see this as blasphemy, but others see it that as somebody that has been initiated, he has knowledge, and he was guiding his people. Just like how in the origins of Shia Islam, it was uh, Ali, uh, who was the son-in-law and cousin of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, who started many of these occult societies in the Middle East at that time, so... Because the Shia were seen as heretics and they needed their own ways to uh, identify each other. And that's where a lot of, a lot of this stuff originates from, from Ali, who all, in, where in Sufism he's also revered as a master. Because they can all, all these orders and other philosophical paths that come from Sufism and then the branches of Shia Islam and then the offshoots of their branch. It all comes from Ali in a way. And in, in the Druze faith, he's revered as somebody that's a reformer and an order bringer. So myself, I can, I can respect that. And I would like to see a world where the Druze and Muslims in the Middle East and around the world, they become brothers and sisters and just realize that we're all walking each other home. Just live and let live. And that's what I hope by doing this video that I, I, I'm able to bridge that gap, not just between Muslims and Druze, but also give an understanding that the similarities that their faith shares with Freemasonry and how we all have a, you know, a part of each other in our reflections where there, there might be customs and practices that are similar throughout the whole world. And we share those and it's our job to be the bridge of that community and try to guide everybody home the best way possible.
This is a Druze uh, place of worship in the Middle East. Uh, it looks like a mosque uh, with the uh, two pillars in the archway, similar to uh, Masonic structures as well. But it has a star on the top, which identifies the Druze. And uh, whoever sees the star for the first time would probably think it's Order of the Eastern Star, those from Freemasonry who would see it. But it's the Druze because that's how they incorporate the East and the West into their philosophies and their teachings. And I hope in my lifetime, as I'm trying to bring world peace between all religions and all walks of life, that as a Muslim, I have a privilege to visit um, a Druze place of worship as, a, as an act of fellowship and as an act of making peace. Because we're all walking each other home and they have a right to exist just like anyone else. These are the, uh, the Druze priests. And uh, when I first saw them, I thought they were Sufi imams or the, you know, the higher ups in the in the Sufi world because of the similar uh, appearance. But they were from the Druze faith, but I, they're still my brothers because the Druze faith incorporates Islam into their teachings with their origins and their teachings and how they operate within their life and in their world with others and self. So for me, it's I didn't feel any difference by looking at these uh, beautiful brothers. And that's the mindset that I hope all have, not just within the Middle East, but all over the world. That we're all the same and we all come from the same creator and we're all walking each other home. In respect to what the Druze said is that we have to make sure that we attain that akal which is the knowledge in our life, and not be jahiliya, which is ignorant. So with the same love and heart that I was able to view these pictures and see them as one of my own, I hope the rest of the world follows suit as well, so we can leave a better world behind for future generations, especially in perilous times like these. We owe it to each other. We're not going to take none of our material wealth with us, but we'll, what we will take with us which will be the greatest wealth of all for this life and the next, is what good did you do for yourself and others with the short time that you were given? And did we bridge the gaps and heal humanity and uplift humanity? Those are the greatest gifts that I believe that I can attain in my life. Not fame, not fortune, but this is it. I thank you for watching. And uh, if I made any mistake in my work, as we're all imperfect, I would ask the uh, the Druze community to excuse me because my intention was to make this video to bridge the gaps, not just between you know my faith and the Druze, but also to connect everyone with Freemasonry, Islam, the Druze faith, Christianity, Hinduism, Gnosticism, Greek philosophers. We're all one and the same, and we're all walking each other home. So that was my intention of making this video, to not just bridge those gaps, but also to teach people about the Jewish faith or those that didn't have any understanding of who they were because of their humble origins and how they never show themselves off in any way. So nobody knows who they really are. So that was my honor and privilege to make this short presentation. Uh, if any questions or comments, please email me at salmonshake911 at gmail.com. All images used were retrieved from Google Search Public Domain and protected under copyright laws of fair use, education purpose. I don't know any of the, uh, the um, images used, and it was just for the purpose of reflection and education. My work is always nonprofit for the purpose of education and bridging the gaps between the different communities. So I thank you again, and I pray that all sorrows and worries be removed from your hearts and May God bless you and your families and all that you do, and you may you be safe and protected during these perilous times. So thank you again for everything.